Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle Mays. I am an author, coach, speaker, and counselor, and am, uh, have been in the field for over 20 years treating betrayal. I'm in the founder of the attachment-focused partner betrayal model and author of the book, The Betrayal Bind. And I'm here today with my colleague, Bruce Butler. Bruce, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I've been with Relational Recovery Institute for 12 years and um, been working with Michelle as associate clinician, uh, working with individuals, uh, sex addicts, some partners, and couples, which I'm sure we'll get into. Yes. So we wanted to do a little uh, interview and video today to really talk with you all about the importance of couples therapy and the role of couples therapy in healing after betrayal. So I'm going to be interviewing Bruce and asking him some questions and his thoughts about this, um, because this is really his uh, area, uh, area of expertise. So Bruce, tell us how you fell in love with doing couples work. It's a long story, but I'll make it short. Um, when I came on board 12 years ago with Michelle, uh, I had an infinity of in this idea of working with uh, teenagers and children. And I started that process. And further in, I realized after having so extensive experience with working with children and families, I realized, hey, I want to work with couples. Because working with couples for me meant that, yes, I can still have an impact on children, but it's indirectly through couples. Then uh, sometime thereafter, I was uh, introduced to emotionally focused therapy for couples. And that theoretical approach by Sue Johnson really spoke to me. It really uh, spoke to me in terms of how we as human beings um, are attached and need Attach, we have attachment needs, that connectivity that, that creates this secure bond with one another. And uh, from there on, I just, I just continue year after year, just really fell in love with working with couples. Oh, that is awesome. And I also am an EFT fan and trained in it as well. And I always say to Bruce, I, for years, I always said I had a therapy crush on Sue Johnson. <laughs> yeah. And, <laughs> and then if, if you really, you know, to that point, if you, I always say, if you cut me, I will bleed EFT. I, I yes. believe in it. And, um, and I believe in it because I believe it helps couples. Yes, absolutely. Okay. So let's talk about working with couples and doing the actual work with them. And I think, you know, we're talking primarily about working with couples who have been dealing with betrayal whether that's from a sexual addiction or whether that's from a traditional affair of some sort, pornography addiction, the whole gamut of sexual betrayal. And for those couples, there's such a significant injury. There's so many injuries that have happened around the betrayal. So can you talk a little bit about the importance of repairing those attachment injuries? You know, I really have over the years, I realized that, you know, I have a number of couples come in my office and one of the number one things that they say that they would like to work on is communication. And while I agree to, to uh, a certain point that that is very true, I believe that there's um, something to be said around working with, okay, what are the injuries that are present that could block communication, right? So I think I, I look at injuries and repair of betrayal injuries or attachment injuries as the um, gateway to working with everything else from looking to thrive in the relationship to really great communication to resolving conflict. And so it is a process that I think should be foundational with regards to um, with regards to the repair piece. I think that should be foundational to the process of couples work, um, because, again, when we can remove the blocks that that the wall that 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 was erected, if we could just kind of do the repair process by 
removing these blocks, then it allows each other, each person to see one another uh, as they work and, and, and actually reach for what they really, really, really desire mm. in fellowship. Yeah. And I also, I'm thinking about, you know, with so many couples that are dealing with this topic with betrayal, I think often they can end up in couples therapy that often hops over the betrayal and goes to work on like historical couple issues. So can you also talk about the timing and the order? Because I always say timing and order is so important in treatment. So can you talk about like the timing and order of doing attachment injury repair work? Yeah, you know, interesting. Um, when you put, uh, I've learned that when you put two people together in a relationship or in relationships, because we're imperfect, injuries are bound to happen from both sides. And that's understand that 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 is understandable. When there's betrayal in the relationship, I believe also that while the betrayer may have some grievances or some 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 thoughts around their injuries, I believe the most recent piece would need to be uh, addressed, treated, looked at, explored before we can actually go to the historical relationship injuries that have happened prior to the betrayal. I think it's important to do that because then without that, the, the betrayed, um, it's very difficult, I would imagine, for them to actually do work in that healing process for them um, if we go back, if we try to start from the beginning and then work our way to the present, it just, it, it just, from what I see, it just, uh, it's very hard to, to work. It's very hard to process through that. Um, when you had this wound that's so raw, you know, so recent and so raw, it's just hard to do that. So it's understandable that, um, you know, the betrayer has, you know, they have some, some injuries as well, but we cannot obviously do that work first before we actually do what need, what's needed in the present moment. Okay. So for those who may not, they're hearing the language of attachment injury repair as we're talking about this and what it is, but it may still feel like, okay, but what is it? Yeah. Can you give yeah. them a sense of I don't know, like in like what what is attachment injury in a in a couple session look like? Like what are we yeah. doing when we do that work? Yeah, you know, what it's not, it's not um a shouting fest. It, it <laughs> is it is definitely not that. Mm -hmm. And so I'll take my cue off that to say first, it's a it's space where both people can feel safe. Mm -hmm. It's it's um it's a moment in time where we do not necessarily, at least how I practice, I do not rehash the items of betrayal, but we explore, I explore, I expand, and I deepen the emotion in the moment that the, that the, the, uh, uh, the betrayed person experienced, discovered, or was disclosed. And I just really spend a lot of time with that person and just kind of just kind of hear and and hear hopefully something that the betrayer didn't hear before but not from a place of ang well anger could be there but not from a place of we're rehashing what the person did but you're hearing that person's experience you're hearing the emotion you're hearing deep emotions and even imagery that hopefully will resonate with the betrayer and then that betrayer responds to that as opposed to react defensively or in a protective mode, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah, that makes sense. So what I'm hearing you say is something about betrayed partners and I think every betrayed partner has certain incidents, certain things they saw, heard, were said to them that haunt them that stand out more than others from their experience of betrayal. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm hearing you say is you're taking one, like maybe one of these things that haunt the relationship, haunt the betrayed partner, but rather than go back through the 
the details of the thing, you're taking that experience and going underneath to tell me what it felt like. Yeah. Yeah. Tell me how it impacted you. Yeah. That's important because if we go, if we go and dance in the weeds of what happened, it's going to naturally put the betrayer that's going to hit their nervous system. They're going to want to protect. They're going to want to defend because they don't want, it's so uncomfortable for them that they, they don't want to go through that again because they know the damage and the injury that they cause. But if they hear it differently from a place of this was my experience, then perhaps they can lean into that. Perhaps they can hear it and have some staying power. And then hopefully my, my hope is all, you know, I always hope to hear the, the listening party say, you know what? I see that now. I feel that. I have remorse. I understand the emotion. I don't understand your experience, but I understand the emotion behind that. And for that, I have remorse. I have sorrow or whatever it is and how they, it resonates with them. And something I, I, I must say, I learned from you years ago that change te- typically is hard to have until the betrayed partner see that their pain resonates with their the yeah. person who hurt them. Mm-hmm. It's not until that I can, okay, I see that my pain resonates with you, that healing can begin or movement can begin. And I believe that's so true. And that's, I think, really key to the repair process. Mm-hmm. The repair process is kind of difficult at times because I'm usually working with the... Um, the injured uh, person, which in this case is the betrayed, uh, the betrayed person. And um, I'm, I'm working with them solely. So it almost feels like I'm doing the work individually, but I often will say, Hey, I'm working on your behalf. Um, and, and so please be a part of this process. Although I'm focusing because you, you will have to respond to what you're hearing and, and allow it to resonate with you. So I'll let them know that I'm working on your behalf. It's not that you're not a part of it. I will come back to you. But more importantly, what you hear is what you want to grab hold of as you um, seek for words to respond to um, in this in the in the moment. And it's like a like speaking of in the moment, it's like um, I try try to create the moment to be like a here and now Mm -hmm. rather than us being you know, in the cognitive, I try to make it here and now, like I try to bring it, the feelings in the present Mm -hmm. um, so that the person who is hearing can hear it in a different way. And I also try to guide the speaker in a way that um, they are reframing what they would have said before, like maybe a shouting match, but they will reframe it in a way through emotions that their partner can hear it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, that feels so important. And that piece that you said about, you know, the healing is really blocked until the betrayed partner feels truly heard. Yes. And all the I'm sorry's in the world mm-hmm. don't matter at all if the betraying person, the betraying partner hasn't been willing to feel the other person's experience. They haven't yes. been willing to enter into it and really sit with the level of pain, the level of uh, distrust, the level mm-hmm. of anger, all the things that have been caused, that has to be held mm-hmm. by the betraying partner. And so I think that's so important in what you're saying about you're doing the work to help the betrayed partner really articulate their experience at the deepest level and then helping the betraying partner hold that. Mm-hmm. Right. And pay attention. Like uh, pay attention. I've heard you say what's happening in your body, what's happening in your body to the betraying partner yes. over and over again about like helping them come down and feel what it feels like when they're listening to the betrayed partner. Yes. Yes, yeah. absolutely. And I think one of the uh, other piece to this process is I say this early on when I'm working with couples and, and also in um in any, whether it's intensive or whatever the case may be, um, that I'm like their 
I learned this from, I always learn from my couples, but I learned this from a couple. They said to me, you're like a Sherpa. And I was like, oh, okay. A, a, a relational Sherpa. Okay, yeah, I'll be your relational Sherpa. So I'm guiding. Mm -hmm. I'm guiding through this whole process. Even the be betrayer, I'm guiding when they want to go to the most comfortable place of I'm sorry and I'm like, well, hold on, let's slow down that, let's slow that down a bit. And I'm wondering what would you like to say without saying, I'm sorry? Like, how would you attend to the feelings that are being expressed right now without using, I'm sorry, I know there's sorrow there, but what would you say as you hear this? So it's more, you know, it's not just, hey, you all go for it after I ask a few questions, but it's me guiding as well. And I try to create that safe space there as well. You know, as well, because I know we we're a creature of habits, you know, for the most part, and we will go to the most comfortable place. And the most comfortable place for some is to um, I don't know what to do here. So I'll just say what I think needs to be said or something I remember hearing, mm -hmm. you know, and that feels mechanical and it doesn't feel real and it doesn't feel true. And therefore, the 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 betrayed doesn't feel like the person is, is hearing them, mm -hmm. you know, their partner is not hearing them. Yes. And I love that Sherpa idea and the guy, it, it, truly, you can't get there without somebody helping you get there, mm -hmm. you know? So it, I a hundred percent hear you on that. So when you do this work with couples, this attachment injury repair work, what do you see change as a result of doing this experiential process with folks? Yeah, for sure. You know, it really depends on each couple, each couple is different, you know, um, it's what I've noticed. But I think in a basic level, one of the things that is important for couples to know is that the work that they do typically is like, I would see it as like a launching pad, a launching pad into dismantling, finally dismantling that wall that blocked connectivity and I think they can walk away with a felt sense of being heard and essentially a road, hopefully a road of hope that, um, that, that can change through, can, that their coupleship can change through consistency and commitment through the process. Yeah, it seems like there's something about that repair experience it almost feels to me like it puts a foundation back under the couple. Yes. Like it's almost yes. like putting a foundation under them of like, okay, now I, I have felt heard. I have felt seen. I've had my wounds held in a way that rebuilds trust and we can build on this. Yeah. You know, it's, like I said earlier, it's, it's, I see it like a, the image that comes to my mind. It's like that process open if it's done well and it's you know the couples come in and they really really hunker down to do it it's like i, I imagine a gate opening to everything mm -hmm. else that they want to you know experience in the coupleship that they hadn't in a long time or they had ever experienced because of the injury so conversely if you don't do this repair work what will happen like how could it yeah well, it's think you'd be stuck yeah yeah, it feels like to me, it's um, what I've, I've experienced. It's like this never ending loop of mm -hmm. the same thing, different song, but it's the same thing over and over. And that is the inability to ultimately emotionally connect, to securely bond with one another. I mean, mm -hmm. that's really what it boils down to. You know, just this loop that continues to play that you can't, it's like getting on a ride that you are ready to get off, but you can't get off because it's just going so fast mm -hmm. until it's slowed down, you know, through such a process, the couple can guarantee they will be in this loop. Um, even if they try to sweep it under the rug and kind of deny it's there and, and try to move on, it's there. And you won't be able to securely um, bond with one another as you so desired uh, to do. 
Yeah, it will really haunt the relationship. Yes. Yeah, it will haunt it. Indeed. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you for being here today, Bruce. And I hope for all of you who are listening that it gives you a little window into this really important piece of work uh, for you as a couple, this attachment injury repair work, and that it feels like, okay, I've got a better sense of what that is and how important that is for our healing process. Thank you.